news and entertainment, this relentless bitch on, on game. Hey, hey, bitch on game. Hey, relentless. Hey. All right, welcome to the Cole and Dre show. I am Cole. And this is Dre. What up, world? What's up, world? We got Cantu with us today, man. We got Sarah. a very special guest. Very today, special man. guest. You know what? I, Dre has been doing a much better job of introducing our guest to me, yeah, so I think I'm just man. gonna let Dre. Nah, start man, you got it, but we got it. Because just like we had youngster, I said we got youngster with us, and Dre said, hold on. So you're making me look bad. So go ahead and tell us something. <laughs> now, now, we, we, too, we want you to do it, but we want you to understand, like, we got to give him that. The that, magnitude. That, yeah, we got the magnitude of the guests we be having, man. Okay, okay, you know okay. And this man do everything for the community. He, mm. he in these streets, man. He got a great backstory, man. He overcame a lot, man. So I think he needed his just do. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> so I'm going to give it to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? You know this is my boy. Just, this is my boy, though. Okay, that's your homie. That's my guy. So just just the um. <laughs> just the things, just overcoming, you know, being locked up in 16, mm -hmm. getting a 10 year sentence. We're gonna start with that. Right. And I wanna know how that shaped you. And you know, what 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 did you do during that time that made hold you on, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. For those of y'all don't know, man, this is my guy Dieter Cantu, man. What's up, man? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Welcome to the show, man. I appreciate no, y'all for We ain't let him talk at all. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're trying to get a man a proper introduction. Yeah, man. So, nah. my so God, Dita can too, just man. Tell, start with your backstory, man. Just start with, with, you know, a little bit about where you from that happened with things that happened yeah. to you early on that's kind of shaped you to the point where you at right now. Yeah. to where you want to be a community activist. No, nah, for sure, sir. I appreciate y'all for having me. Okay. Uh, Dita can too. Uh, whole family from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, from the south side of Chicago, my mother from the uh, the north side. Still going? Yeah, you good. Yeah, okay. But yeah, my mother from uh, north side of Chicago, rest of my family from the south side. Um, she had spinal meningitis, and so um, she got sick, you know, early on. She was in the military. She got discharged from the military. Okay. Father passed away, went to foster care, things of that nature. And so I went from, um, you know, Chicago to East St. Louis to Granite City, to all around Missouri, Illinois, and um, what did it say? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, you know, I came to Texas and uh, got in some trouble. You know, I was outside. Oh, you got your case so. down here? Yeah, San Antonio. He I came out right here, thought... right here to the wild, wild west. No, I got jammed up to San Antonio. Man, because you, because how did you make it through Chicago and East St. Louis and then come to Texas? Right. Well, you thought you thought it was slow down yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, go right. ahead. Tell me. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, this is exactly what happened. And so what? It was some. You didn't tell know, me that part. No, there was some yeah, cowboys. Yeah, I called it right yeah. away. So um, you know, there was cowboys out here. They made an example out of me. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so and it was me. It was me and uh three of my friends. And so. I was 16, uh, they were 17, 18, 19. Okay. And so, you know, they were adults, so they were had the opportunity to bond out. And so um, October 23rd, 2005, I remember it. Um, you know, I went to the station, and then from there they sent me to juvenile. And then, um, you know, not having an attorney, anything like that, they were talking about like 25 to 40. And I had a court-appointed attorney. And so, um, you know, I thought, you know, everybody's sticking to the code and all that. Come to find out, my my friend had wrote a witness statement. Damn. And so, um, you know, he went home that same night, and then my other two friends they bonded out. I signed for ten years. I went to uh, Texas Youth Commission, and so I went to Marlin, Texas. Went to uh, Vernon, Texas. Then I went to Gideon State School. And when I came out, my other two friends, not the one who wrote the witness statement, were still going to court. And so when I went to like their last court appearance, they were just like, "We're gonna throw it out because y'all been going to court for like four years." And so wow. I'm the only one who did the time. And wow. so when I got out in 09, I had um, 05 to 09, the rest of my time was on parole. So I got off in uh, 2015. Wow. That's a hell of a story. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a perfect example of not, not understanding the system, right. not having the proper support to help you navigate your way through the system. And that happens to a lot of guys, man. Absolutely. A broken system, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Very broken Definitely system. a broken system, man. <clears throat> Absolutely. Because, and, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna try to stay on the subject, but mm -hmm. I think one of the things that irritates me that people don't realize is that prosecutors are, n nothing against, I mean, because you got some good prosecutors, right. okay? But for the most part, you gotta understand, they further their career by winning. Yep. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's in a situation where you have a competitive nature, mm -hmm. You kind of do some things to the slight. You'll slight a few things to win. Right. They ain't in the business of losing. Yeah. So even cheating, when they know they dead trying. wrong, right. in your Absolutely. case, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They the knew kid, you didn't though. know better than they railroaded. A kid, though. Yeah. A kid, though. A kid, yeah. They and took advantage of that. It was my first arrest. It was my first right. time ever being arrested. Yeah, they, right. so, and, and they took advantage of that. So, right. But the good thing is you learn from it, you've grown from it, mm -hmm. and uh, you're making some things happen right now. So, you know, 
as we, we you know, we, for most of you guys, if you're new to the show, man, what we haven't been saying, well, I said, me or Dre don't know what the hell we doing, but we have fun <laughs> doing it, right? So, you know, one of I the things- I think we starting to get the hang of it. We though. starting to get the hang we're of it. We starting to get the hang of it. We getting well, better. We, well, I think if we getting the hang of it, one thing we ain't saying is make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Right now, click like, yeah. subscribe, man. Please. Yeah, you got to do that, see? So, okay. Let's so get now, it. with that being said, go ahead, tell us about a little bit of some of the things, <clears throat> tell our artists about some of the things you have going on right now and how those things could possibly be duplicated, duplicated right. if, if people want to get in those type of businesses. Especially no, coming absolutely. from where you come from. Like, I think that's yeah. real important. Like, that's why mm-hmm. I want you to come to, you know, to share your backstory, but right. also where you came from, where you're going, and where, you know, where you're trying to be at. That's what we want to know. Right. Well, everything I really do is uh, social enterprise, right? So it's okay. like black empowerment for the community and um, juvenile rights for shit show. You know okay. what I mean? And so um, when I was in there, I was reading a lot of books because I had um, – I went in solitary confinement because I had a situation with a correction officer, and so I thought I was gonna go to the pen. And so um, I started reading a lot because my brother was in Bowling Green Penitentiary. Okay. And so he would send me books back and forth, and um, that just sparked my interest when I was released to start, you know, pursuing college, but really to be like autodidactic to to teach yourself to educate yourself. Hold on, hold on, hold on, go back. What you just said? To like to like teach us auto didactic. Yeah, right, right. I, I got a hell of a vocabulary. <laughs> I ain't never heard auto didactic. Hey, yeah. I'm looking like that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Dre gonna let that go by now. Nah. So auto didn't right. break that down. So I'm gonna process mean, clues, kind of do. I feel like I was gonna get it down the line, but go ahead. Yeah, I need to know what that means because it's a bunch of people looking like I don't know what the hell that means. I <laughs> yeah. asked for y'all because I, well, I don't know. <laughs> no, but really just to be like self taught. You know what okay, I mean? Self taught. Auto didactic. Right, like what you're interested in, like a lot of things ain't ain't taught in like a formal institution. Well, you like gave a me a whole new word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like a lot of stuff just not taught in a, in the school. You know what I mean? And I'm when, auto didactic. I got you. Right, and so when I was in jail, auto didactic. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See? I got you. So when you were there, go ahead. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, we had like you know you had like Harry Potter and like books that just didn't mean nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? And so when my brother was sending me books back and forth from the penitentiary, I got out and I started building um, libraries inside of jails. Okay. And so um, I started in Texas. I went to like five different facilities in Texas. Then I I branched out to to Oakland, Chicago, like across the nation, building these libraries. And from there, I, um, I just started like learning how to grant write and fund things, you know what I mean? And so um, I was doing fundraising and, and campaigning, things like that, but once I really started learning how to grant write, I was, that's what branched me off into like the community gardens, the nonprofit sector, um, public speaking engagements, you know, retainer fees, all that, because um, we don't read. We don't read and we don't write. They say you, you want to hide that? something from a nigga, put it, put in, it in a book. 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 You know what I mean? and, and I believe that to be 100% right. certain because, <sighs> like you say, you got the Harry Potters. What I saw. Right. That's sad, but it's so true, though. Yeah, when yeah. I, but what I saw is, is during my time of being incarcerated, so many people were. The cartel. Urban uh, novels, urban novels, the, urban All the urban right. novels, I mean. Nothing wrong know, with those. I yeah, appreciate the people that write, nothing wrong with those. It's cool, but I mean, you gotta ask yourself, what can I what can I actually put in myself that's gonna help me long term? Especially you know, can, with this downtime. Like, I mean, that was entertainment, right. but I mean, you want, I won't personally want, I read those things, but I personally want to read more. I want to know about people that I admire. Like, so I read a lot of autobiographies. I read a lot of uh, to-do books, like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. real estate, but stuff I didn't right. know. I was right. trying to gain knowledge on it about credit, right. about different things like that. Right. That's what I was on. But you know, I, everything counted in my mind. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything count. For yeah, real. even if you start with the hood books, I just right. say read. Right. Just read, yeah. Read. Just read. Thanks. <laughs> exactly, because it's a muscle. Your brain's a muscle. And you know, you gotta exercise that and you gotta <clears throat> retain knowledge. And so <clears throat> I mean, just doing that, learning how to um, you know, speak better, things of that nature, you know, learning how to it's a lot of things were in books. And so from there, um, I just started doing grant writing and that's how I got into uh, leaving the county. I worked for the city in Chicago. I was a violence interrupter. Okay. And so from there I left. What was that again, a violence interrupter? A violence interrupter. Oh wow. And so it's uh, it's basically like they call y'all instead of calling the cops when something's going on. Okay. You know what I mean? And so it's called Cure of Violence, but we were violence interrupters. I think they got a documentary on, about it on like YouTube. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, it's called, it I think called Interrupters. I think it's called Interrupters. Okay, okay. okay. Gotta so, check it out. Yeah, I used to be a violence interrupter, and then um, I had an opportunity to to work overseas for uh, the Department of State for the government, and then um, they're gonna send me to Ukraine. And then, like two weeks before I was supposed to fly out, um, they canceled my assignment and said we're gonna send you to West Africa in six months. 
And so I didn't. I quit my job and anything. I'm like, I don't got nothing going on. I can't do that. You know what yeah. I mean? And so somebody reached out from Houston because I was shooting my application, my resume out everywhere. They're like, why don't you come down to Houston? And so I worked for um, Texas Organizing Project as a criminal justice organizer. And then I worked for the county, and then I got a substantial amount of money, a grant to lead the county. So now I got my own 501c3. My so, man. Wow, yes, work. What I'm talking about, yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. Facts. I love it. Yeah. See, this is the part I love, Travis. <laughs> Tra- I got, thing, this is right. the part I love right here, man, because I think a lot of people don't understand. And, and this is a problem, and no people going to probably say, I don't give a damn what they say. You know, I don't give a yeah, you you what y'all say anyway. Mm. But you I think it's two things that most people should do um, in their life. One is, I think you should probably spend two years in the military, and you need to spend about two to three years in jail. Mm. Hold on. What? I know. I know. I'm yeah, just that saying. Whole, you got you to talk powerful. about that. I, what? Y'all, you That's agree? That's powerful. Well, two, I years, can, I, two years, what's, two what's years in the military. Well, my logic is simple. And two, three years in jail. The military gives you discipline, first okay. of all. Mm-hmm. The jail part is going to teach you how to interact with people of all races and everybody and all types of people, right. all you know, all the way around. And I think but two, three years though. Well, the re, well, two years. It could be and, a two year program of both, but I don't know about two, three years. Well, I mean, I don't think I needed more than two <laughs> I, years. No, they I, gave I need, it to me. Right. I didn't need more but, than two, three hours, but I got. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned my lesson. <laughs> so, but but my logic is, I think one of the things that makes you hungry. Right. I don't know. I can't say how hungry it made you at at an early age, but I can say for me, to to have uh, to have millions to lose it all, I was hungry to get it back. Mm-hmm. So to you know, even in your case, you were sixteen, but to actually experience this and be able to see so many lost souls right. and say, you know what? I think it's the best example that you can have. Jail is right. saying, I don't want to be him. Right. That's- I don't want to be that. Right. You can have that in any hood, but it's something like. Being locked up and seeing lost souls, like man, I got to get my shit together. But right. that, that's that's a fair that's a fair statement. But I would I would challenge you on this. Like, what did you say to the people that we also saw dudes in prison that really didn't know how to handle this? Like, and that was far as like you know on some psychological stuff. Like, up, yeah. they really didn't didn't you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, we, we see everybody don't need, yeah, you right. That's everybody saying, so I can't, everybody is not strong enough. Right, I, I, I think that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't, don't want to go there with that. So yeah. I, Cause so, like, we've seen broken we, people in prison. We, we I'm sure we all have. So scratch that. That was a dumb statement. If y'all put <laughs> it in the comments, I'm not gonna say it was a dumb statement. It was a dumb statement. Nah, it wasn't a dumb no, statement. It, wasn't, it, it just, wasn't dumb. It was. It was. It was. I think we got a better way to get there. To get that discipline. To get that, you know, that understanding of what we don't want to be like. I think you can still get that. And we create a program to get. It. I don't know, but I think I have we to still think get on that. it a little bit more. Right, because I agree. When he when he asked me what's my logic behind it, I actually can tell you a little bit more, but I don't want to take up all the time on it. Facts. But just to say my logic. Big, a big part of my logic is understanding how to communicate. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you I think, think the discipline is big or the communication is bigger? What, what, or you think they broke hand in hand? I think they go hand in hand. Okay. Because one of the biggest reasons, people don't realize that you're far more likely to be killed in, in, in society than in prison. Mm. Mm. You're, you're 30% more, 30 or 40% more likely to be killed in society than in prison. Mm. So, so That's you, a statistical fact. Okay, but so, you think... But hold on. So, 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 so let me explain to you. And I think the reason is because one of the things in prison that people try to do most, we try to communicate and talk it out Facts. before it gets there because right. once it gets there, it's, over. it's a problem. <laughs> it's a right. problem. So right. I think you learn communication skills and how right. to really deal with people and interact. And I think if people understood that a little bit better, they could deal with society better. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of these dudes who commit these senseless crimes, these senseless murders, they ain't did no time. Mm-hmm. And so once they do that time, if you'll notice, most of the people that's done time, they they're far more reasonable. Whoa, hold on, homie. Let's right. let's right. figure this out. Facts. Right. Facts. You know, because we understand the consequences of our actions. Right. right. You know, you're free to make any decision you want to. You're just not free of the consequences. That's mm. facts. No bullshit. So Well let, let's touch on that a minute. I know we talked about, you know, um ju- juvenile justice reform and stuff like that, but like let's let's go on a broader scope. Like you said something about senseless killings and you know, being able to communicate and talk things out. Like the climate we in, man, it's shoot first, ask question later now. Like, yeah, nobody wants to be the the lesser. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody right. wants to be the one to walk away from the, the altercation. Like, I mean, we just seen a dude die not that long ago because he gave somebody a door ding and end up, mm. you know, yeah, that's, dying, that dying in the grass station. Yeah, that but it's things crazy. like that, like, because, you know, if you hit somebody's door, I mean, I don't want to speak on the subject. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not, not trying to sign this into the subject because I wasn't there and I know people lost their lives, whatever. But right, right. what I'm saying is, in that moment, like, was it that serious to be like, hey, man, you ding my door, man, oh, my bad. Or like, oh, it ain't that serious. Like, why did it have to go to that point? 
Because I think I seen one clip. He's like, man, I come slap you and all this other stuff. Like it became an altercation when it was just a door ding. So, so from a violence, let's talk to a violence interrupter. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hear it from a violence. All right, from a violence yeah, let's hear that. So, because I have my own thing about it, but I like because to know that what that violence, that that really bothers me. How do you guys interrupt? How do you interrupt the violence? I mean, well, then they looked at violence as like a a, a mental health uh, situation or mental disorder that could be cured. Shit. And that's how they got a lot of grant funding because we would hire everybody who had records and that couldn't go through the police station because we didn't work with the police. So it had to go through the health department mm. for that grant money to land. Uh, and so, you get okay, what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. And so, hey, y'all getting some game right here too. Yeah, because I didn't know that. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. So, yeah, that's what violence center is like. Don't call the cops, call us because we're verified or whatever in the streets. You mm. get what I'm saying? And so, from what I've observed, at least from like youth and young adults, is like, the trauma that we as black men haven't resolved, it always spills out indirectly or inadvertently some kind of way. Some Against other each kind other, of way. basically, like in, in, yeah, a, in the I'm most saying. part. And you can see from like your homies, they, they chain smoke all day, they smoke weed all day. They, it's like too many forms of, you know, trying to, trying to deal with emotions that we haven't sifted through. Like a coping mechanism? Oh, I don't have no that chain smoke saying? all day. Right. Right, right. I don't okay. change smoke, but I <laughs> you 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 smoke all day. You blow, but right. it's traumatized. Though, you, <laughs> I'm it, traumatized. It don't matter how much you smoke; it right. doesn't stop you from taking care of your business. Absolutely. Right. So what he's speaking on is the chain smoking video game players all day with no goals, no dreams, no aspirations to do mm. nothing. Right. I mean, that's when you lost. So, you know, you just you just really hit us with something on writing it. Under so that what that took what that tells me is you did you write that grant? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so that means you really had to understand. Oh, the one for cure violence? No, I didn't write that one. I didn't write that one. But they were getting funding uh, through that. And okay. so they got a, a program called Credible Messengers through Clinton Lacey that just hit Houston. Mm -hmm. And it's the same concept because he was doing it uh, with the Obama administration. Okay. And so they, it's the same concept, though, as like uh, cure violence and violence interrupters. It's people who have the lived experience are the most qualified to speak to youth and young adults who are going that. through the same thing. Definitely agree. You know what I mean? Because I think so. it's very difficult for a lot of these kids to listen to right. this the regular college educated guy, never been in the streets. You know, right. um, you you if you don't if you don't understand my life, how can I listen to you? Facts. And I, and I've been in I've been in those circles where I've seen them bring guys on the stage, you know, at youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I've I've listened to these, you know, I matter of fact I heard one dude some, Man, you don't know what the fuck you talking yeah. about. You a college boy. They can smell it. And I was like, yeah. whoa. That's tough. Okay. Okay, That's youngin'. Mm. But then I thought about it like, he's right. Yeah. But just because he was a college boy didn't mean, just he's a college boy didn't mean he didn't know what he was talking but about. But that's like shooting a messenger though. Like, did you miss the message because you didn't like the messenger? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that yeah, happens thanks. a lot. That right. happens and, a, a But whole I think lot. it's unfortunate, but it happens more than we would like to admit. Mm -hmm. And so, so what you're saying is basically by having people that they can identify with, they're more willing to accept right. the message. Absolutely, absolutely. So with that being said, like, there's so much, so many layers to this conversation. I mean, we can go yeah. all day with this conversation, but you know, not to, not to stick to it too much, but my thing is like, I think the follow-up part, like, you know, I, I go speak to my, my homies, like, you know what I'm saying, I wanna start doing this thing called OG Mondays, OG Wednesdays, and something like that, where I can just sit down and just ride. Like, I wanna chop it up with, I wanna know where they coming from. Right. I wanna know what's making them feel like that just because we don't like each other, you gotta die. Right. Or like, you know what I'm saying, or, or had it, it's almost like a death wish in my mind. Like, you know, I'm, I'm from that, I'm from that, that cloth, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But my mind wasn't so blown where it was like, man, it's whatever, every time. Make mm -hmm. sense? Cause like it, it makes sense, but let me let me tell you the the reality of that because and and speaking because I struggle of, with that like well, I struggle with that part. Speaking of what you just said, I, I I think it's something we should do together. I think it's something we can do on the show. Um, we know we can do zooms on on, on that something. So, so something. let's do that. I think that that's something that we can offer. Because me and him but, been speaking about it, but, but you know let, something. So maybe right. we can bring Cantu on with us. I'm, I'd be fine with that. But let me let me let me share this. And I, and I I'm real big on numbers, and you know that. Right. So if you take a look at the numbers these kids aren't really as bad as we're making them seem. Okay. Are they still lost? Right. Yes. But if I look at the numbers from the 70s, 80s, 90s, the numbers say that we were worse. But I don't I don't want to say the, just the, the kids, though. I just want to say the, society in, in a whole, because I see old cats doing some foolish stuff, too. Mm. I don't want to say just age kids. Does, age yeah, don't I, I don't know. Yeah, age don't make you wise but, at all. No, but what I'm saying is, I think what's happened, what's happened now is it's more on the forefront because of social media. Yeah. Um, Perfect example. Yeah, Yesterday, young Dol young Dolph got killed. 
R.I.P. Dolph, man. R.I.P. Dolph. Never had a chance to meet him, but I heard a lot of good stuff about him. He said he was a good dude. Like, I don't, you know, I've never never had a chance to meet him. You know, but it was just, I saw it on YouTube on 30 different times. So I'm like, damn, this is, I must be into this because it keeps getting recommended. So, and and the reason I use that is because I think they have so, these algorithms give us this type of news that we continuously search. Mm -hmm. And so it's automatically there. So it's, we're on a heightened sense of alert because we see it more and more, but they're also targeting us. Right. right. So you say in the 90s, or even the early 2000s, you know, you didn't have Google, you didn't have YouTube, right. you didn't have uh, Facebook, you didn't have Instagram, Twitter. Mm-hmm. So you weren't getting the news as fast and as much. Yeah. So I think even yeah, though the yeah. problem was bad, we didn't know how bad it was. But you also had to go find your man back then. Now you can just see him on live and pull up on him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. They dropping locations now. You ain't got to do no homework nowadays. No, no it's tough out here, man. Oh, it's, hard. man. it's hard to be outside right now, man. I'm, I'm confused. They scared to come outside. I, I'm confused, man, because, you know, back then, like I said, you had, you know, oh, you yeah. had some static with somebody. You know, you either <laughs> bumped into him at one of the spots or, you know. But now cats are, you know, they spinning everywhere, man. They killed dude at a cookie shop, bro. Like, mm. like, like it's just... It's, it's 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 different. Man. Looking it's, it's at different, different things because I, I you know it's just different. They say you know somebody dropped his location on. Right. I'm like wow. Right. They didn't have that back then. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Here you go. It was looking mm. to draw. Yeah. You, yeah. You, hey right. man, he had the gas. <laughs> they damn. He pulled off. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah, no. Right. Hey, hey, you damn. see this here? Like here okay, he, there he is. You know what I'm saying? So that that's the part where I think is is was like you said, the attention is getting the 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 media coverage that's happening to him. Like I said, it's being fed to us. But it's like with social media, man, it's like, here we go, this is where we at, come through, woo woo yep. And next thing you know, it's shots fired and- And that trauma, yeah, it's trauma porn. So, yeah. You know so, what I mean? So, they getting paid so, off black anguish. So mm-hmm. so on that, because I know you, I know if you're in the space that you're in, you're also dealing with mental health. Mm-hmm. And that's something I'd like you to touch on because I think mental health is, is a much bigger problem than I ever thought it was right. since I've started looking at that uh, as a business, right. you know, when I when I started thinking, okay, I'm gonna open up facilities, mm-hmm. and I, and I got the package presented to me, and I'm like, oh, this is way bigger than what. Right. That's a, that's a touchy subject, though, man. Well, it's that's touchy, very, but very touchy. some of these niggas is crazy. I agree, but I'm saying, but I mean, that that wasn't but, right. But, thing that to wasn't say, right. 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 <laughs> but but you know, but you know, I, y'all, hey, right. I, we we trying to be politically correct, but no, we not. Some, pe- well, <laughs> no, we yeah, not. we're really not. But yeah, mental so health, some of these mental people health or mental are, excuses, because I mean. Some people mental are health or mental my excuses. anxiety, my anxiety, man. Come on, man, knock it off. But you know, that's just me. So I need to know what what what, what I need, I need, how can I tell about that though? How can I tell them? I don't know. You're not an expert, but I mean, yeah, I know you, expert, but you've uh, been in that lane for a while. So yeah, I'm just but curious. you're dealing with it. So I mean, so from a from the youth standpoint, at what part of that, as you you know, Dre say, mental health, mental excuses. Right, right. Did you say mental health, mental excuses? Mental health, or is it a mental excuse? Or is it a mental excuse? Yes, it's a good play on words. I like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are like Thank like you. you said, there's a <laughs> lot of um, marketing that a lot of these big companies are doing to um, make us feel inferior, right? You know, they get ratings, like you said, the algorithms and the logistics, where mm-hmm. it's like the first thing when you get on social media, is somebody black just got killed. Mm. somebody white just got acquitted for killing somebody black, you know, and then they're gonna keep on putting in your face to just kind of be like, nigga, in real life, you're inferior to us. You know what I'm saying? And mm. so that does have a collateral effect on, especially youth, right? Like PTSD and all that. Like, people in Chicago shooting, walk around with guns 11, 12 years old, you know? And so once you become an adult and you really haven't worked through all that, yeah, it leaves a stain on your on your mental. It leaves a stain on your brain, you know what I mean? And if you haven't worked through that, for the most part, if you're, like we talked about CWAP, or you know, just being in placement, they're just gonna give you some Seroquel, some medication, tell you go sit in the corner. Mm. That's the part I don't like. Th- right, right. Because I think there's, I think you have a lot of companies in small and medium and large mm-hmm. size businesses profiting from the pharmaceutical company. Who are some mm-hmm. of these companies? That because they they're I mean, the ones probably benefiting now because with the medicines, with the right. the treatments and stuff. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you, somebody's benefiting big well, time. Pfizer is, is huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, you but not to say Pfizer's doing anything particularly wrong, but right. I think we're over medicating society right, right now, right. and I think we're we're allowing mental health to be we a mental excuse. We definitely and, living in a drug culture. Yeah, so, and, and, I, and I think that's, drug that's user extremely culture. unfortunate. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> drug user yeah, culture. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because a lot of these <laughs> a lot of these these things are addictive. Like my son, when I was gone, he was on, on Ritalin and something mm. else which gave him man boobs, you know? Mm. No. And it's something that he hates. And you know, I, I'm a, if you, you listen put, to the podcast, kid, 
I'm going to go. I ain't going to. I shouldn't tell everybody. He don't like it. I'm going to mm. put it like that. Matter of fact, he don't like it to the point he won't. He been working out. He done lost weight. He done, done everything, but it's still a sag there. Right. And, uh, you know, but that that's a direct that's a direct reflection of the medicine. Right. That's one of yeah. the side effects. Absolutely. And, wow. you know, that's uh, that's unfortunate because it, it's happened to so many young black kids. Right. Uh, and, and I think it's a situation where you got to look at how much medicine costs mm -hmm. or what you can bill for it on Medicaid, Medicare, Absolutely. private insurance. Right. Yeah. I mean, so Absolutely. now it becomes a situation where is it about treatment or is it about profit? Absolutely. And, and I think it's far more about profit than it is about treatment. Yeah, because we don't have a lot of holistic healing practices in place that people are trying to make money. You get what I'm saying? Like the way you can change your diet or like we got the community garden, you know what I mean? As mm -hmm. a practice to say, this is the importance of labor, growing your own food, selling and eating something that you've grown. You Tell know us what about mean? the community garden. Yeah, please touch on I that. I mean, it's, uh, it's urban agriculture, so we're trying to push a narrative of black farmers. You know okay. what I mean? There's a lot of money and there's a lot of grant money into it, but aside from that is ownership. You know, definitely buy back the block, but also buy back the earth. You know, they're not making no mm. more land. No, they ain't making no more land. And so we're trying to really push a narrative in the South, in Texas, to grow your own food, have it own hemp, hemp is legal in Texas, uh, get your hemp grower's license, your producer's license, all that, and you know. What's, what's the process in getting your hemp grower's license? It's uh Department of Agriculture, you know, um, the way I did mine to, to acquire my land, I got some acres in Crosby, and in South Texas, just go through TexDOT, uh, and through the, uh, you can do an auction off eBay, but go through TexDOT and adopt a highway. You get a, a, a contract that you gotta renew over and over, if you want to go that route to get the land, and then once you have your site, it's like your, your, uh, you know, your your points, your latitude, longitude, longitude. You get your uh, your license from the Department of Agriculture, your seeds and all that from the from city of Austin. Hold on, hold on. So wow. on the land side, mm -hmm. you you didn't you didn't say go buy the land. You said something else. So it's like it's like adverse possession real estate. Right. You know how you can right. get the forklift. It's the same thing with land. You go, you can go through an eBay auction. You go mm -hmm. through any kind of auction. Mm -hmm. Acquire the land, get the affidavit or whatever, mm -hmm. write off on it, get the judge to sign off now. So, oh. Man, he just gave y'all some deep <laughs> That's something we're going to have to really <laughs> dig into. Right. Uh, but, you know, do your homework. He said, if you, you know, if you want to hire something from a read, you know what yeah, I'm saying, put it in the book. book. Yeah, but he just gave it to you. So, but you still going to have to do a little bit of homework <laughs> to get the rest of it. Yeah, and they sign it over to you. I mean, it's, it's simple. It's just you got to really put the labor into the earth. People yeah. think, like, I got some land. Well, if you get half an acre, that's work. You know what I mean? And yeah. then you got to crop harvest the seasons, and you got to know what to grow and when to grow it. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's worth it something you could pass down. We need to stop, you know, selling Big Mama's house when the gentrifiers come through and just pay them property taxes, you know? Same with land, anything else. Because we don't, we don't own shit. We got a bunch of, you know, shit that don't mean nothing at the end of the day. And a bunch of jury, a bunch of cars. Yeah, but bunch land, of but yeah. But like he's yeah. saying, I think one of the things, though, because I'm dealing with this with my grandmother right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm really explaining to my grandmother, she's 89. Like, listen, you know, she, she's she got a house, and it's not much. I mean, a house in Fifth Ward right. probably worth about 150 But I'm explaining to her, you know, like, hey, right. we're gonna, you need to set up some form of a trust to pass this yeah. house down. And, you know, and I think for a lot of people, and I've not just my grandmother, I've talked to other um, elders, and, I, and they, they have a problem. Right. Well, I don't want my kids fighting over it, and so I'm not going to do nothing. Right. Well, that's not that's the not way to right. do that's it. That's not the way to do it. That's not all. business, all. you know. And th you'd be surprised how many times that happens. But it's gonna make the fight even worse I, if they don't exactly. Do right. It's gonna make the fight because, worse because you know you have to identify things. You have you have to put things in place and plan. And it's something that you know we were doing. It was one of the services that we were offering. You know, as as, as far as setting up wheels, and and I just got to the point I didn't like it mm. because it was frustrating to me because I've seen this situation more than fifteen or twenty times. Well, we get elder people in. And we're telling them how to protect their assets, mm. elderly black people especially, how to protect their assets. And they and they think, well, I just got a little old house, thirty, forty thousand dollars, you know, with city gas, you know. But right. you don't understand the power of making that decision, right. you know, generations and generations on. And so right. they have a problem making those decisions because we haven't been taught. Yeah, it's the reason why you can't pull up in rivers and just buy some real estate because it's all right. been there forever. Yeah, forever on. Like, you know, and, and they, they understand how to pass right. it down. Absolutely. Right. And, and that's something that we have to do. And, I, and I, I'm going to encourage all of you guys, if you have any elders in your community, make sure that, you know, you check with them and make sure they have a will. 
and you know everything in place Absolutely. to pass that down because when they die and nothing's there, it goes into probate, it sits, and then you you don't you never know who's gonna get it. Right. Look up somebody that don't look like you jogging around your neighborhood that, that's, because they that's bought normally it normally happens. Right. See right. now what you, what you just said. I don't care if they look like me or not. I want to be around people with like values. So all my neighbors can be black, all of them can be white. As long as we share like values, right. that's okay. what's important to me, not your color as much. That's strong. I need like values around That's me. strong. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I love I my brothers there, but don't right. get me wrong. If you, if you niggas. There you go. I just said. <laughs> there you if go. If you good brothers or there you, you good go. sisters in some there cases. There you go. If, if, if I happen to get that, man. But, but you know what I mean, like for real, I don't, I don't want you not cutting your yard, I cut mine. Mm. I don't want you parking your cars in, in, in your grass. Mine's ain't there. I need I need a HOA in place. And I think that's something that we don't do is put those HOAs so, in place. So, in okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this for a second. I know we off a little topic a little bit, but you, Fifth Ward, it's been a predominantly black neighborhood, you know, history, right? Right. So now, you know, there's some changes going on in Fifth Ward area right now. Like there's there's some changes going on. So how does that make you feel growing up there all your life and now going back through now and see the changes that's happening? Like how do you feel about, you know, your childhood area now looking like something different other than what you know it as? Meaning the gentrification that's happening right now, the you know, the the changes going on. It's hurtful because even though those people might have like values, like you said, like values, whatever, like you know what I'm saying? So how do you feel about that? It's it's a hurtful thing because I realize I think what happens as you gain knowledge, you get a better understanding of what's going on. Right. And I think you have a lot of people that's still there, but they don't they still don't grasp and understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. So my feeling on it is I've seen, you know, gentrification is somewhat taking place in Fifth War, but it's not like in Third War. Right. Because what's happening in the Fifth Ward is it's turning far more in, like, Frenchtown, the bottom. Well, not the bottom because the bottom is kind of different, but different little parts. It's more Hispanic than anything right. because the Hispanics have came in and actually started to own the property. Right. Same way in home. Mm-hmm. We were renting. You know, same way all of home. us know somebody right. in, in hoods that's been renting for 30 and 40 years in the same house. Yeah. And so they, they've came in and started to actually purchase the property. Mm-hmm. And so another thing that's happened is so many of these properties that were there when I was a kid are no longer there. It's just empty space pieces of land. Mm-hmm. So now, or, or, or totally run down houses because the kids, when, it, when, the, when the mother did die, they didn't pay the taxes. Right. The, you know, when, when, when the grandfather died, they didn't pay the taxes. You still gotta pay the taxes if the family member died. <laughs> you still got gotta to. pay the taxes. So, because a lot of people don't know that. They just, oh, my grandma dead is in her name. My house, yeah. My yeah, house, yeah. yeah. No, you still have taxes. But real, that comes from a lack of financial literacy on our, on our behalf. Right. So mm-hmm. that's a part of what we're trying to make sure we get across on this show, man, to, you know, financially edu- educate our audience. Learn yeah. how to spend your money wisely, man. Learn how to use your money. Make your money work for you. That's, that's what this show is about. Hopefully we can bring that to you guys, man. Like, and at the same time, give y'all little niches on how to make money generate different wealth from different avenues. Like we said, we've talked about cars, we've talked about houses, mm-hmm. we've talked about acquiring land, like we've yeah. talked about grants. So much grants. I mean, like, you people know don't understand, just, just what he's talking about on grants. I have a doctor who got a $50 million grant. What? Yeah. For Shama what? Rashid. For what? I mean, um, she's doing, um, Shama is doing- Some kind um, of research? We're going to have her own. Okay. Well, she, she does the, what is it called when you break down your DNA? Um, so here you go again. You have all these big old turns like the oxygen shot that really wasn't an oxygen shot. Anyway, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm just I know saying, doctors. I, I'm I, you just know, saying. I'm, I'm kind of in the oh, business. Listen, so, just in case you don't know, so my Cole's got this phone. Mm. We call it the money phone. He got everybody. It don't it. ring no more. Oh, you need see? a doctor. He oh, got man, it. we ain't ringing, baby. You need a boxer. He got it. You need got a movie. VIP he got it. Listen, man, don't do that. Right. Listen. He got so it. So we're being VIP serious. Content. No, we all being serious. But basically, so <laughs> she got she got this huge grant, and I know a couple other people that's got grants, and it's something I probably need to get into and really. Absolutely. Get a better understanding of because a lot of times people don't understand this. I won't say the grant money is just free because right. obviously it comes with some guidelines on how you have to spend Definitely. it. Definitely. Right. But it's also a way you can still empower yourself and the people around you and do a good deed at the same time. So I think, right. you know, it's something that, matter of fact, we just got a new consultant on board right here. <laughs> hey, y'all you already know. Y'all welcome to Homie Can too to the. To, to. See, I don't know if y'all remember that show about introducing people and not getting them from it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's one of them times. Hey, man. Hey, we just got a whole new consultant right here, y'all. He don't even know it. <laughs> no, nah, we can work. But, but we got I'm a whole it. new consultant for, for our business over here, Relentless Business Solutions. <laughs> I'm with so, it. So, you know, we got I'm a whole new work. consultant over Plug. there. Plug. Yes, sir. I'm with the work. Let's yeah, go. yeah. So, you know, yeah. we're going we gonna to chop that up. So, uh, so man, moving forward, man, I know you just uh, you launching libraries, man. I just, I just came to your launch not too long ago yes, for your sir. library, man. How you yeah. feeling about that, man? Let the people know what you did out here, man. You know. Like I said, I, I want people to get to know you because, like I said, you do great work for the community, man. You a, you you really like a behind the scenes cat, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you I'm real like low key that. with it, yeah, you know like what I'm saying. <laughs> but you know, Bruh. it's is 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 that saying we just want to give people their roses, man. You a young cat, I man. You know, you, yeah. and you're making grown man moves. Yeah, and I just want you to know, hey man, we pro I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying. Right. And we applaud it. And I just want the community to understand, like who you are, like, you know, and when they see you, man, give you a pat on the back and let them know, like, man, keep up the good work. Yeah, no. Nah. So, you know I'm gonna do my part yeah, right yeah. now, I just met him. They're gonna <laughs> my pat on the back. Hey, no, I appreciate hey, man, you, man. Homie, I'm hey, serious, man. man. Yes, sir. We finna, we finna work together. Yes, so man. these two shows that I, I'm finna get some money with, I love it, man. Yeah. So yes, I'm gonna show y'all, y'all be able to rewind some of these shows a year from now, y'all gonna say, he really getting money with these niggas. Yes, sir. You can a lot. Everybody. It doesn't matter what you know. It matters what you do. Yeah. Right. It ain't what you know. Sometimes it's who you know. Sometimes. It, so yeah. You know. It's who you know. And how much they like you. Yeah. yeah facts. Is, yeah. I hope you like me because we're gonna make some money. But normally, <laughs> no, no, yeah. normally you're gonna like me because I'm gonna yeah. make you some money. So it's cool. Yeah. Right. Yes, facts. 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 So talk to us. What else you got going? Because I know you. So we've been over the cannabis. You writing grants. You doing libraries. What else you doing? You yeah. a wealth of you a wealth of knowledge right now. What else you got going? Um. Yeah. I mean the library. That's my first like open space library okay and so all the other ones were in detention centers and mm -hmm. so that's off Lawndale that's open to the public if you've been um directly or indirectly impacted by the criminal justice or child welfare system you can check a book out you could take a book home I don't really care because I, I keep getting the books in so we're not gonna hold somebody accountable or find somebody for reading the book you know what I mean so aside from the library we do um know your rights um workshops every other Thursday in fifth ward okay it's off um it's a Masonic Lodge off Lions Ave. Yeah, I know exactly where you are. It's right there. So we do it every other Thursday. This last um, meeting, we had Judge Deshaun Jones and um, Attorney Ed Jointer talking about uh, assigned counsel and public defenders, court-appointed attorneys. Mm -hmm. And so every other Thursday, come out. We're going to do search and seizures, know your rights. When it comes to getting pulled over, warrants, can't nobody kick your door in, all that. That'll be um, December 2nd. And so, yeah, we do those every How can Thursday. people, it, how, do you guys do any Zooms or anything like that, man? Because everybody obviously ain't going to be able to make it. Yeah. So is there a way that, that people can uh, tune in mm -hmm. without being there? Yeah, so my name, if you can go online, my name is, my website is Dieter Cantu, D-I-E-T-E-R-C-A-N-T-U.com, or, um, yeah, or CA4Y.org. That's my nonprofit organization. Say that one more time, please. So it's Dieter Say it Cantu. directly into that camera right there. Yeah, look at that camera know, right there. There we man. go. There we go. Look at that I'm, close up. See, Dre got <laughs> it bad. Well, Dre do go to, come back. See, Dre do this the whole show, and yeah. now he got me doing that because I'm looking at him. Because well, I like to look at the people I talk with. Right. I'm, I'm so, just right. engaged. So we're not person. looking at the cameras. We're nah, not engaged. I'm just, I like to be engaged. engaged. Yeah. You got to be engaged with these cameras. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they hear us. You know what I'm saying? They I'm the type of, I want right. to be engaged with my guests. I'm, I'm want to pick, I want to I'm, I'm with you. I, I do too. I'm just, I'm yeah, I like you. taking yeah. it all in. Because I, I know my guy, but right. I just learned some stuff new today. So make sure you give them that again, man. So make sure you give people, let people know how to get in contact with you. And if you guys have anything to offer, man. Y'all have anything to offer. You yeah, know that's going to help his cause, or you yeah. you know you can be a part of that cause in any way and grow that grow that awareness. Make sure you reach out to him. So go ahead and give give that information out again. No, I give you the whole layout. So it's DieterCantu.com, mm -hmm. D I E T E R C A N T U dot com. And so we're doing these Know Your Rights workshops every other Thursday. What I'm doing is I have five project associates. They're responsible for 50 members, and out those 50 members, they're responsible for 50 votes. And so that's 250, 250, 250. We're gonna get over 12,000 votes out for the next legislative session, which is 2023. So we're gonna flip any seat in the city of Houston, any district. We're gonna, anything related to government, the people gonna have to say so. We're gonna sponsor candidates, we're gonna endorse candidates, and we'll screen you. And if you're not what, you know, if we create a policy agenda that isn't co created from the community and you're not doing what the community is asking of you in your district, we're gonna vote you out. And that's from a school board. Woo! To a judge that's or talk. That's Woo! that. That's a power move. That's from now to 2023. Hey man, that's a power move. You you uh man, shout out to Chicago, man. Y'all y'all <laughs> produce some real militants. <laughs> y'all produce some rebels, man. <laughs> hey man, we slipping over here, man. Say run run that run them numbers back by one more time. Yeah. 
Run the 50, 50, 50, whatever the hell you just said. Yeah. Run it back one right. more time. So we got to hear that again. So man. I got five staff. Five. Right? Okay. And so with these community meetings, you if you come, you're a participant. You're not a member. A member, we got to show that you're doing work, that you show up, you're committed. And so out of these five, they got to have 50 each, right? So okay. that's 250. Those okay. 250, if they get 50 votes, 50 people to vote individually, we'll have well over 12,000 people to drive to the polls. And mm. so as of summer next year, we're gonna shift and start a GOTV get out the vote campaign and we're gonna be registrars. And so that's not just Harris County, that's Fort Bend, that's Montgomery, that's every surrounding county. Bro, from the, the DA all the way to the judge, the juvenile judge to the whatever, we if we have, if we co-create an agenda and, you, and you're not a part of that and you don't know your, your numbers, your data, or you're doing like malpracticing or whatever, we we just gonna vote you out, and we're gonna mm. breed somebody, not breed, but we're gonna train and groom somebody from the community up to the point where they can be in your seat. Woo, I love it. That's so don't, don't say right you disenfranchised. Right. Don't say you don't have a voice. Don't say you don't know, because if you have an opportunity to watch the show, you know. Right. You can participate with the homie right here. Yep. He's That's giving you an like opportunity to get your five or 50 to come right. out to vote. So there is no excuses. And and with the and we don't just educate y'all on these Thursday meetings. We provide jobs, uh, clothing, uh, vouchers for for housing. We do all that. And so if we we knock on all the doors in Fifth Ward, Third Ward, Havistock, Garden City, once y'all come to these meetings, they grow. Like we got a hundred people at every meeting. They get bigger and bigger. And so once you come, we not just feeding you and you know and teaching. Like we connect you to re real resources, but we ask you to stay committed to the fight. And with our community give backs, our events, our meetings, or whatever it is, we we need you all to advocate. It's just like the Panther Party. It's you know like I the love it. Point okay. program. I need. I got to get my bread all the way back up because I can't actively participate. Yeah. Well, I can. Right. I know I can. <laughs> right. I ain't and really we don't ask for no but, money. But but no no. I understand that yeah. you can't grow a lot of things without no money. So yeah. you know because you are five hundred one c three. I want to make sure I, you know I contribute to that party. Absolutely. I'm all right in with real it. Way. I'll start. I'll way. start with small until I can get to big. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah, start yeah. with a couple of grand or something though that help. My man. I yeah. mean. Yeah. So his got small, His small is bigger than others. So just know that. Yeah. 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 yeah, but if y'all come, My like, man, I we, gotta love it. We just need y'all there, like we really do. And um, you know, just looking at the the percentage of people that's voting, like black black folks ain't voting, young black folks for sure ain't voting. And and we're teaching people like if you've had a record, if you can vote, if you're not on probation, if you're not on parole, you can still vote. There's Project Orange that are going inside the jails that are registering people to vote. I voted for Barack Obama when I was 17, 18, when I was in TYC. You know what I'm saying? That was my really? first time ever voting. Yeah, I was in Ver uh, Victory Field, Vernon, uh, Texas. That was my first time ever voting, and they registered me. I voted for Barack Obama, and so <laughs> that was my first time voting for Barack. You get what I'm saying? But I'm saying like if you have a prior, and that's another thing we partnered with um, JCAP and uh, a few other organizations out of U of H. And so if you have a record, we get that sealed. You have a non-disclosure record expungement sealed. We do all that. It's a one-stop shop when you come to these meetings, but yeah, I gotta get with you, you on gotta that keep for coming. somebody because yeah. that's a service we were offering it. Yeah. Um that I think you could do. So we'll talk about it. Just do it. Facts. It's, 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 actually a profitable, clinics, it's actually a profitable service. Facts. Uh, even though you you more in the good deeds. Y'all yeah, right. see the mergers that happened on this show, man. We had a couple of mer business mergers on this on this very platform, yeah. man. Like we on to another <laughs> one, man. That's dope. Hey man, that's a beautiful thing. You got anything thing. else you want to say before we leave, man? No, I just appreciate the opportunity. Man, uh, we appreciate, appreciate you, you coming, man. man. Yeah. Like, man, thank you, man. We no, sincere. For real, for real. And we, we wanna I wanna personally applaud you. I know Dre did as well, you know, yes, for your community, uh, your work you're doing in the community. Yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about it, but you're doing it. I appreciate and, it. At a that, young you know, age, action, you started yeah. early with it, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Action is always speak action speaks loud. And work. But right. here's one thing I gotta say before we go, and I'm kind Do of. You gotta say it? I gotta say this. You know why I gotta say this, Dre? Because what I've realized. Drum roll, we need that drum roll. No, we not need a drum roll. <laughs> y'all, listen, but what I've realized. <laughs> it's, it's normally the light skinned niggas that's doing all the work. <laughs> My black ass and y'all black ass got to get out of here and get in the fight, man. That is right. Hey, man, I'm just keeping it 100, man. That's up. Am I lying? We had a conversation about that. Really? Because somebody like, said, like, Cornell West, uh, Michael Eric Dyson, 
Malcolm X, like, like. Yeah, like yeah. really. I mean, I, Martin I know. Martin King got a little shade to him. Yeah, Brother Martin had a little shade, a little to, shade him. Yeah, to him. Yeah, you know what I mean. But bad. it's 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 just uh, I can't because it's another one I'm thinking of. That's uh. Who was Sean King? Sean, Sean King, King. He all the way white though, right? I don't know what he. Is. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's all the way white, is he? The, yeah, he Sean look like it. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to Sean King, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pull it up, oh, you ain't got your you ain't got your laptop out today. How okay. research never had a laptop. You know this, mm-hmm. this is a factual show. We can't be saying Sean King White. He really. He, yeah, we didn't say we we, we questioned. Is oh, it? I said he white. Is he? I don't, I don't well, know. Well, you know what? Anyway, we're not gonna get off of course too much. <laughs> I did want to say that, man. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna say a headline. So, so the reason Sean I wanted white. to say that is because <laughs> I just wanted to say, man, shout out to all you good light skinned brothers that's making <laughs> things happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Get out with black ass in line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sure you got some dark brothers out there. No, it's a bunch thing. of them. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of them. It is. It's, it's a bunch of them. You know what I'm saying? But My boy Art up in Chicago, man. They doing their thing in Chicago right now. Man. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Art. Yeah, shout out to Art, man. The homie. Shout I don't know Art, Art, dude. You might know Art, man. Art, Art been around Art? a while. Yeah, Art been around a while. Yeah, he's yeah, he been around a while. Okay. He's doing big things in Chicago with the kind of like the same. He's doing a lot of nonprofits. Yeah. 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 Good job. Good Trying to clean them streets up out there, man. Yeah, man. So, with that being said, man, thank y'all for tuning in to another great show. As I said, we try to make sure we drop some jewels, uh, give you guys, you know, an opportunity to get educated on businesses, have a little fun, and try to get some goddamn. Mm. Hey, with that don't being said, don't forget to click that like button though. Hit, yeah, don't yeah, hit that like that button, subscribe man. Subscribe button though. Yeah, because right. this energy we have, this synergy is always beautiful, man. Definitely, definitely. man. Definitely. Always, man. So with that being said, I'm Cole, and this is Drake, and I'm out. Hey. We out, man. Peace. Peace. Hey. What you talking about? about? Boy, listen and pay attention to what we talking about. We can show you how to make a hundred thousand in the drought. These niggas fraud, but I'm already used to that. Big boss man ain't coming out unless they sign a check. Travis, what's up? Nothing chilling. You know the Houston way. If it ain't about money, nigga, we ain't finna come.